Hello and welcome. Hello and welcome. How are you today? I hope you're doing fine, whether it's morning, afternoon, evening, or night. I hope that you are having a pleasant day and you are thinking about turning your passion into a payday. I am here for you to send out information that is positive and to be aware of information that is negative because thoughts are things and things get into your mind and you'll be a negative personality. You don't want that. Or if you do, then I would like to know why. We have positive and negative energy anyway, so we don't have to worry about not having enough of one or the other. I would like to read to you today from the Bible, from the NIV National New International Version, the New International Version. And I would like to read First Timothy, the sixth chapter, Love of Money. We're talking about money on this video. And yesterday I gave you some points. And today I want to clarify what Timothy said about money. All who are under the yoke of slavery should consider their masters worthy of full respect, so that God's name and our teaching may not be slandered. Those who have believing masters are not to show less respect for them because they are brothers. Instead, they are to serve them even better because those who benefit from their service are believers and dear to them. These are the things you are to teach and urge on them. The part about love of money is now. Verse 3, 6th chapter of First Timothy in the New Testament. If anyone teaches false doctrines and does not agree to the sound instruction of our Lord Jesus Christ and to godly teaching, he is conceited and understands nothing. He has an unhealthy interest in controversies and quarrels about words that result in envy, strife, malicious talk, evil suspicions, evil suspicions, and constant friction between men of corrupt mind who have been robbed of the truth and who think that godliness is a means to financial gain. 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we have brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. People who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge men into ruin and destruction. 10. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Paul's charge to Timothy, 11. But to you, man of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the sight of of God who gives life to everything and of Jesus Christ and of Christ Jesus who while testifying before Pontius Pilate made the good confession I charge you to keep this command without spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ which God will bring about in his own time God the blessed and only ruler the King of kings and Lord of lords who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or can see. To him be honor and might forever. 
Amen. 17. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasures for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age, so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. Timothy, guard what has been entrusted to your care. Turn away from godless chatter and the opposing idea of what is falsely called knowledge, which some have professed, and in so doing have wandered from the faith. God be with you. That was the instructions to Timothy from Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the command of God our Savior and Christ Jesus our hope. To Timothy, my true son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you so much for the reading of the word, my dear kind Heavenly Father. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the many people that are listening to this broadcast. Help us to find the right way. Help us to search the scriptures and see what you want us to do to be righteous and to follow the Holy Spirit's urging. Thank you for everything. And all the popery people listening, we say in our prayer, Amen. Coming to me right now in my mind is 1 Corinthians 3, 16. And I'm going to um, see if I can find it for you. And it says, You are of the Holy Spirit, a temple. Do not damage your temple which is your body so take good thought take good food and do not damage your body i will find that verse for you uh it's in corinthians first um uh, 316 i'm just tw twirling along here all right let's go over here and see if we can find the part that talks about more about that. Corinthians is in the Testament of New on page 632. Let's find 632, page 632, 632, 601. 633, 632, here it is, the first Corinthians, and it's talking about divisions in the church, and I'm just going to read uh, the uh, 16th verse for you, because it starts at the first verse and goes all the way down to the 22nd verse, and this is Paul talking to the Corinthians. It says, verse 16, Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's Spirit lives in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God, God will destroy him. For God's temple is sacred and you are that temple. Take a view and look at the third chapter of 1 Corinthians because it talks about the body of humans and how we should be pure as much as possible. The other thing I would like to talk to you about is money. We were talking about money recently and money is mentioned, I have a note here from Google, it's mentioned 140 times in the King James Version of the Bible, 140 times, 140. And Google says, if we include the words gold, silver, wealth, riches, inheritance, debt, 
poverty, and related topics. It turns out that the Holy Bible pays a great deal of all attention to financial matters more than nearly any other subject. And that was Google, and that was put in Google in September the 29th, 217. I researched it on Sunday, April the 12th, which was Easter, and found those notes. And the love of money, we just read that the NIV version comes from 1 Timothy 6, 10. 6, 10. I have some books that I have been reading over the years, ever since I was a teenager, in high school, and all through my life. And I would like to mention some of them for you right now. Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill. And we have The Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. And that comes from T. Harv Ecker. I happen, Eker, Eker Ecker. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, E-K-E-R. This is the um, box of cards that he has accompanying his book, which is a New York Times bestseller. It's an older book back in 2005. And this is the back of the of the uh, card box. There are 50 cards in here, like flash cards, like you do for music. And he says, we all have a personal money blueprint ingrained in our subconscious minds. And this blueprint would determine your financial life. You know, you can know everything about marketing, sales, negotiations, stocks, real estate, and the world of finance. But if your blueprint isn't set for a high level of success, you'll never make a lot of money. And if by chance you do, you most likely lose it. The last comments from T. Harv Ecker. The good news is that now you can actually reset your financial blueprint to create natural and automatic success. And these cards will help you do just that. Remember, if you think like rich people think and do what rich people do, Chances are you'll get rich too. And this is T. Harv Ecker. And he has a website. The website is secretsofthemillionairemind.com. And one of the cards, I'll show it to you. It says, admire rich and successful people. I admire. Rich people admire other successful people. Poor people resent them. If you view wealthy people as bad in any way, you can never be rich. Because how can you be something you don't like? Those are some thoughts from T. Harv Ecker. And um, commit yourself to the Holy Spirit. That's what I say. He says commit to being rich. That's what he teaches, wealth. Commitment means to devote oneself unreservedly. Once you commit to being rich, the universe will assist you, guide you, support you, and even create miracles to you. Okay, I think that's about enough of that. Let's see what this one is. Oh, yes. Enhance your energy. Money is energy. Everything is energy. Money is energy. Big money takes big energy. So get into shape, eat properly, and get enough rest. And become a great learner. Read what you want to do with your passion. Turn your passion into a payday. In the words of Gregory Reed and T. Harv Ecker, the Holy Spirit has it in the Bible. 140 times, starting in Genesis and moving on through Jesus' remarks. Jesus remarked about it in Matthew and Luke. Matthew and Luke. And we'll talk about those also. The um, rest of the day is going to be studying how to focus. Focus. I'm going to become my own think tank. <laughs> my focus will be on how to earn income 
with my new businesses that I have. One I've had ever since 2012, Sharp Paragon Entertainment. And I want to have an event kicking off the church idea that the Holy Spirit has put me in the middle of. And this is uh, one of the flyers that we have that we're going to use the idea coming up in the future. There's Sharp Paragon Entertainment at the top. Kickoff of Faith, Purpose, Life, Center, Church in Cleveland, Ohio. Mobile and virtual. This is yours truly. And this is my church hat. Just in case this is the first time you've seen this. This is the church hat. This is me when I'm dressed up. <laughs> I like to dress casual. I don't like a lot of front feel, frills, earrings, and jewelry, and all of that. Fingernail polish. I don't like all of that. That's just my natural way of being. Ever since I found the mustard seed locket in the street at 109 Maxie Street in Knoxville, Tennessee, in front of my grandmother's house, I asked her what it was, and she said it's a mustard seed encased in a, in a locket circle, sphere. Well, from that day forward, I seem to have been a child of God, working my way back to reality all the time. Focus on your passion. Do your purpose. Puffery people of the world, don't give up. Do your purpose. And someone else I want you to read is Tom Hopkins, How to Master the Art of Selling. And I have Jeffrey Gomer's book, Gitmer, G-I-T-O-M-E-R. It says Sales Bible. But it's not really a Bible. It just means that it's got a lot of information on it about sales and how to do it. And I found this book in the library, of course, while I was walking through one day. And it's very good. It was, um, he says, nothing happens until a sale is made. And if you're in the business of life, you do make sales. Read Motley in 1946. Most people aren't willing to do the hard work it takes to make selling easy. That's Jeffrey Gittimer. What's so new about a 15-year-old book? The Sales Bible started out as a definitive sales resource 15 years ago, before email, before websites, and when cell phones were 50, 50 cents a minute. Times have changed. So has the Sales Bible. And he's talking about this edition, which was put out in 2005, I believe. So this one is the old edition, too. Okay. Uh, this is the main thing that I like to keep around all the time. The Bible gives me a, a wonderful inspiration. I can always find something in there that I need to read about. But then I have to go... When I have thoughts that are not right readily, I go to this right here. Strong's Exhaustive Concordance of the Bible. Big, thick book. And I know that they have the internet as well. I use the internet also. I am internet savvy. Google is my friend. Now, to find me, if you're looking for me in the future, I will have an address for you to write me if you like to write. Or if you like to look me up on the internet, it's VivianLSharp.com. And you can look also for the music. Link takes you right straight to Reverb Nation, today I'm going to give you a break. I'm going to sing a short song for you. I Was Lost by New Maniac. As this is my new career, 
Not new, actually. I've been doing it for a while. Music is my life, and you must practice. And this is not really practice. This is really doing it in front of the world. <laughs> Acapella. The name of the song is I Was Lost. It's 2 minutes and 24 seconds. Written by New Maniac and the music and the words and all that stuff is on. Reverb Nation, I have a new song up there called Just Wanna Fly. Walking through the pouring rain, I'm walking through this life. People call this world insane. We struggle through the strife. I looked around to stop my pain. No one in my sight. Searching through this world in vain. It's like walking through the night. I was lost until I found you. Every day goes by. Now they're all brand new. I was lost deep in this heart of mine. Now you have my soul till the end of time. Memories, they flood my brain. Maybe wrong or right. Every time you call my name, gets me through the night. I was lost until I found you. Everything I am, now I'm all brand new. I was lost, now I know it's true. Everywhere I go, I'll be with you. Yay. Yay, 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 yay. Okay, now we know that music is my life. And I must get my piano cleaned off so that I can... Uh, Get on the bench, play some music. Music is an international language. Don't forget it. And to you, popery person of the world, be sure to do your passion. Find out what it is. Start doing your passion. Make the world a better place and make your life more happier if you're not already gloriously happy. Thank you very much. For tuning in. Look forward to talking to you next time. Thank you.